Have you ever wondered about the reliability of the information you find in academic and scientific journals? It's a question that many might not have considered, but it's an essential one. Today, we're going to delve into the fascinating world of these journals, a cornerstone of academia and scientific progress. The world of academic and scientific journals is vast, with tens of thousands of these publications in existence. They span a multitude of disciplines, from anthropology to zoology, each carrying the weight of scholarly knowledge and scientific discovery. These journals are not just repositories of information, they are the lifeblood of research, informing theories, shaping debates, and driving innovation. For many the name alone, academic journal, scientific journal, carries a certain gravitas. There's an assumption of credibility, a presumption of reliability. After all, these are the places where researchers publish their findings, where scholars share their insights. They are the gatekeepers of knowledge, the arbiters of what is considered scientifically sound and academically rigorous. Yet it's important to remember that these publications are not infallible. They are human endeavors, subject to the same potential for error and bias as any other human activity. And while many strive for objectivity and accuracy, there are instances where these ideals are not met. Moreover, the sheer number of these journals and the vast amount of information they contain can be overwhelming. It's a veritable ocean of knowledge, but how do we know what's worth diving into? How do we discern the reliable from the unreliable, the credible from the dubious? Indeed, these questions are not just academic, they have real-world implications. The information we find in these journals informs policies, guides, practices, and shapes our understanding of the world. It's crucial then, that we scrutinize not only the information itself but also the sources from which it comes. Yet, as with everything, there are two sides to the coin. Let's explore some of the criticisms and shortcomings of these revered publications. Consider the replication crisis, a major issue that has been shaking the scientific community for the past decade. To fully grasp the replication crisis, imagine this scenario. A scientist conducts an experiment, gets a certain result, and publishes it in a top-tier journal. Another scientist, intrigued by the study, attempts to duplicate the experiment but fails to get the same result. This isn't just a one-time fluke, it's happening repeatedly across various fields of study, from psychology to medicine, even in the most prestigious journals. This phenomenon is what we know as the replication crisis. The replication crisis is not about a few isolated cases of negligence or fraud. It's about a systemic issue where a significant percentage of studies cannot be replicated. The reasons behind this crisis are complex. They include factors such as pressure on researchers to produce positive results, the use of questionable research practices and problems with the way statistics are applied. Now let's take a step back and ponder, why is replication so critical in science? Well, replication serves as the bedrock of scientific credibility. It ensures that the findings are reliable and not just a product of chance or bias. If a study's results can't be replicated, it casts a shadow of doubt over the validity of the original findings. This brings us to the implications of the replication crisis on the reliability of academic and scientific journals. The crisis has exposed a disturbing reality. Even the most respected journals can publish studies that are fundamentally flawed, putting their reliability into question. It's a wake-up call for the scientific community to reassess and improve the way research is conducted and reported. The crisis has also sparked a movement towards open science, encouraging researchers to share their methods and data. This transparency can help detect errors, promote rigorous research practices, and ultimately, enhance the reliability of scientific findings. The replication crisis shows us that even the most respected journals can publish flawed studies. It's a stark reminder that science, like any other human endeavor, is not immune to errors. But it's these very challenges that drive the scientific community to evolve, adapt, and strive for better. Another criticism of academic journals lies not in their content, but in their accessibility. Now this issue is quite pervasive, and it deals with the presence of paywalls in academic journals. Imagine this, a breakthrough in scientific research has just been made, it's revolutionary, it's enlightening, and it's locked behind a paywall. This is the unfortunate reality for many academic journals. When we talk about paywalls, we're referring to the practice where access to academic articles is restricted unless a fee is paid or a subscription is purchased. These fees can be quite steep, often running into hundreds of dollars for a single article. This effectively locks out those who cannot afford to pay these exorbitant fees, which, unfortunately, includes many of our brightest minds, our students, 
our researchers, and our educators. The outcome? Well, it's quite simple. The paywalls limit access to knowledge. This may not seem like a big deal, but think about it. When access to research is limited, it can skew public understanding. It means that only those with the ability to pay can access the latest findings. This can lead to a distorted view of scientific truths where the loudest voice is not necessarily the most accurate or informed one, but rather the one that can afford to pay the most. This limitation can also impact the development of new research. Many researchers rely on the work of others to build their own studies. So when access to this information is limited, it can stall scientific progress. It's like trying to complete a puzzle with half the pieces missing. Moreover, the paywall issue also raises questions about the ethics of information access. Should knowledge, especially knowledge that could have a significant impact on society, really be locked behind a paywall? This is a question that continues to stir debate in academic circles. The paywall issue highlights a barrier between the public and the knowledge contained within these journals. It's a barrier that needs to be addressed if we are to truly democratize access to knowledge and foster the free exchange of ideas. Peer review, revered as a quality control measure, is not without its faults. Now let's unpack this statement. Picture this, an academic or a scientist toiling away at a groundbreaking study, pouring their heart and soul into it. Then they submit it for peer review, a process that's supposed to ensure the study's quality, validity, and relevance. Sounds ideal, right? But this isn't always the case. Firstly, let's talk about bias. It's no secret that people can be influenced by their personal feelings or opinions. In the world of peer review, this bias can manifest in many forms. There's confirmation bias where reviewers favor studies that align with their views. There's also gender or institutional bias where the reviewer's decision is swayed by the author's gender or the prestige of their institution. Next up, the lack of transparency. The traditional double-blind review where both the author and reviewer are anonymous is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can reduce bias. On the other hand, it can lead to a lack of accountability, making it easier for reviewers to be overly critical or dismissive without justification. Then there's the potential for abuse. Reviewers are in a position of power. They have the ability to make or break a study's publication. This opens up the possibility for deliberate sabotage, where a reviewer rejects a study to delay its publication, giving them time to publish their own similar work. These issues can have a profound effect on the reliability of the information in academic and scientific journals. After all, if the gatekeepers of these journals, the peer reviewers, are influenced by bias, lack transparency, or are prone to abuse, then how can we trust the studies they approve? These issues with peer review raise questions about the reliability of the journals that depend on this process. As we delve deeper into this world of academic and scientific publications, we must question and critically evaluate not just the studies themselves, but also the processes that deem them worthy of publication. So we've explored some significant criticisms and shortcomings of academic and scientific journals. Firstly, we delved into the replication crisis. The inability to reproduce the results of many studies, even those published in highly reputable journals, raises serious questions about the reliability of published research. This crisis underscores the importance of transparency, repeatability, and independent verification in the scientific process. Next, we tackled the issue of paywalls. The high costs of accessing many journals can limit the spread of knowledge, creating a barrier for those who can't afford the often steep subscription fees. This effectively means that much of the world's scientific knowledge is locked away from a large portion of its population. It also raises questions about who truly benefits from scientific research, the public, or for-profit publishers. Then we examine the problems with peer review. While it's a crucial part of maintaining quality control in research, it's not without its flaws. The process can be biased, slow, and sometimes even compromised by fraudulent practices. These issues can undermine the credibility of the very system designed to ensure the integrity of academic and scientific publications. The implications of these issues are far-reaching. They challenge our trust in the reliability of academic and scientific journals and remind us that these publications are not infallible. They're subject to the same flaws, biases, and limitations as any other human endeavor. But let's not forget, these criticisms are also driving forces for change. They inspire attempts to improve the system, to make it more transparent, more accessible, more reliable. 
The scientific community is already exploring alternatives like open access journals, preprint servers, and post-publication peer review, among others. In conclusion, while academic and scientific journals play an indispensable role in the dissemination of knowledge, they're not without their flaws. It's up to us, as consumers of this information, to remain critical, to question, and to demand better. Remember, it's always important to approach all sources of information with a critical eye, even those that seem most reliable. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.